Thank you very much. Our witness over here. Thank you, uh, Chairman Gray, Vice Chairman Bigelow, Assembly Member uh, Joan Sawyer. I thank you for this opportunity to exp oh, I'm from Reverend James Butler from the thank California you. Coalition Against Gambling Expansion. Thank you for this opportunity to express our concerns about this huge expansion of gambling that AB 2863 would generate in California and the potential costs of that expansion. Studies indicate, including a study commissioned by the state of California titled Gambling in the Golden State, that an increase in gambling results in an increase in crime, unemployment, welfare and other public assistance programs, bankruptcies, and homelessness. There are also studies that link and correlate an increase in gambling to increases in suicide and divorces. These are just some of the fiscal and social costs of gambling. Studies also indicate that using a cost-benefit analysis with gambling, that there is a three-to-one cost over benefit. Regardless of the promised revenue, which, as was stated, is very often overestimated, there will still likely be a three-to-one loss in terms of revenue versus the cost to the state of California. Again, Gambling in the Golden State, commissioned by the state of California, estimates that there are more than one million problem and pathological gamblers over the age of 21. And these problem and pathological gamblers cost the state more than one billion dollars. That's billion with a B. They also estimate that there are more than 500,000 problem and pathological gamblers under the age of 21. If we approve this and permit internet poker, all of those numbers will go up. There are a number of contributing causes to problem and pathological gambling. Two of them are ease of access and speed of play. Both of these are very strong elements of internet poker. Internet poker will provide 24-7 access from nearly anywhere, including work, school, and home, to the people of California. Every minute of every day from nearly every place in California. For more than 90% of Californians with access to the internet via computer or phone, there will simply be no escape from this gambling. The California, Cal uh, California Office on Gambling Problems acknowledges that they are unable to treat the current level of problem and pathological gamblers in California. An increase in the number of gamblers will only exacerbate that situation. As was testified before um, earlier by those who are supporters, they believe that if somehow internet poker is legalized, that all of the other illegal sites will simply go away. That perhaps the gamblers will choose the California site in spite of perhaps better offers being made on the illegal sites? Or is it that they believe that the illegal sites can somehow be closed or blocked? And there's going to be discussion on whether that is possible or not. If it is possible, we should do it now. If you talk about consumer protection, which seems to be among the issues engaged today. The best way to protect consumers from engaging in a quasi-illegal activity is to stop access to that activity. As we heard various supporters come up, it seems everybody wants a piece of this gambling pie. Well, the pie is being paid for by the people of California. Legalized poker is not inevitable. 
It only requires decision makers to say no. You are those decision makers. As I stated, many of the, of the supporters hope that they will benefit from the passage of AB 2863, including the existing gambling entities that hope to profit from their participation in internet poker, those who hope to share in revenue distribution, the internet gambling providers that hope to supply the software and management of the sites, or the current internet players who are engaged in quasi-illegal activity. However, the social and economic costs to the state of California far outweigh the limited economic benefits of these profit-seeking supporters. As you consider the cost and benefit to the people of California, I hope that you will vote no on AB 2863. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there, this is a time for anyone else that has any opposition that feels they haven't had a chance to speak. Does anyone wish to rise? I want to make sure that we understand this is the moment for anyone that wishes to testify because we respectfully want to hear from everyone, both pro and con, and I think we've done a just job of that. Does anyone wish to rise? Seeing no one, rally to the call. We'll bring it back to the dais and open the floor for members for deliberation. Mr. Cooper, you had a question earlier. Yes, I did actually, it was for the horse folks. And as far as the percentage of the win, what percentage of the win do they need to get the 60 million? Could you repeat that question, Mr. Cooper? Regarding the horse racing component, what percentage of the win do they need to get the $60 million? we're talking about for the horse racing? Well, in the initial, uh, in the initial year, uh, the $60 million would uh, most likely come from the initial licensing fees. Uh, we haven't arrived uh, at a percentage uh, on the tax issues. Uh, we've committed to uh, continue a dialogue uh, with the various stakeholders uh, and work with the Appropriations Committee uh, to speak to what percentage tax arrives at $60 million. It depends on the success of the market. Uh, which, you know, we have no way of predicting. Right. As we've seen in other markets, it didn't pan out as, you know, proposed. That's true, but we haven't so. seen well, we haven't seen a market that uh, is the size of California, at least here in the U.S. We've seen the examples in the European markets, which seem to be a pretty good success, uh, but certainly uh, New Jersey pales in uh, size right. to uh, California. Yeah. I still want to thank both authors for bringing this forward. I think it's, this has been languishing for a long time. It's good to see some movement on it. But I do have some questions. Uh, there are significant differences of opinion on this issue amongst the tribes. How are you going to unite them, and what will you do if you can't unite all the tribes, or a majority? Sure. Well, um, as you recall, uh, Sam, uh, beginning last year when this committee first took this issue on, uh, there were two main issues uh, left unresolved. Because, uh, again, this is not a debate uh, we began last year. This is a debate, uh, debate that began uh, almost a decade ago. Uh, most of the issues having been uh, discussed and the nuances worked out over the years, the two remaining points of contention uh, were, in fact, whether or not horse racing uh, would be a licensee and uh, the suitability issue uh, as it pertains to suitability standards. Uh, I spent uh, the fall working on the horse racing component and brought forward this year a package we've heard a lot about today uh, relative to a, a, a compensation to the industry for forgoing uh, their opportunity to participate in the Internet market, a market uh, as was uh, testified exclusively theirs uh, at this time, uh, which leaves us with one issue to be resolved, the suitability issue. Uh, members, if you take the bill and turn to page 25, which was referenced earlier, You'll see in lines uh, 15 through 18, uh, the act that added this subparagraph shall not become operative until criteria are established by statute to address involvement in Internet betting prior to the state's authorization of Internet poker pursuant to this chapter. Now, that directly relates, uh, is, is a uh, black and white uh, in writing commitment on behalf of uh, the authors uh, that we intend to put suitability language in this bill. Uh, over the course as it moves forward through appropriations into the floor and certainly before we move uh, this legislation out of this house we are going to have suitability standards 
uh, in that uh, place, you know, in, in place of that placeholder language you see there. Uh, we are having uh, every two week meetings with a variety of the different uh, tribal governments uh, on all sides of the issues with all different perspectives, trying to arrive at what that language will look like uh, and build the consensus necessary to move this forward. But um, I think it goes without saying that unprecedented uh, uh, support uh, for this measure. Uh, we've never seen uh, card clubs, horse racing, and uh, tribal governments all up here in support of an internet poker bill uh, over the course of the past decade. No, you've done a tremendous job bringing them together, but I did hear a lot of the folks from the tribes, a lot of the chairmen come up here and say they're taking uh, no position on it. So there are still a lot of issues, and a lot of folks are you know very cautious in their approach with it. So. And this is the biggest issue. I mean, the other ones were, you said of those, and those were great selling those, but the big number one issue, the 800-pound gorilla still is in the room with that. And hopefully, hopefully it's not still on the floor. It can come back here to this committee and have it resolved here and worked out. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the big issue. What, do you, what are your plans regarding that? Well, as, as I was just saying, we're meeting every two weeks with all those folks, uh, both no position and support uh, sharing and revising draft revisions of what suitability language would look like. Um, we've made great progress, and I hope to continue to make progress. Uh, and I've made both a verbal commitment, the word of the chairman of the committee, as well as a uh, in writing commitment right here in the bill uh, that we will, in fact, put suitability uh, language, which okay. is the last remaining issue. Right. And like I said earlier. And I might remind you, you used the word number one issue. Uh, last year, the number one issue was horse racing, so right. I guess number one issue of the month, perhaps, is what you uh, meant. Correct. And all these meetings that have gone on, still, folks are still in a, you know, wait and see position. So, sure. and like I said, I, I commend you on bringing it forward. Uh, you know, it's something that I think is much needed. But, but once again, my my approach too is just cautious. I so, appreciate your uh, comments, and we'll certainly keep you informed of uh, any progress on the suitability language. Thank you, Miss Waldron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my colleague touched on some of my concerns. Um, as we heard, a uh, few of our, our tribal friends are concerned about the suitability issue. So if the bill moves out of committee today, then it will proceed you know, through the process. But at what point do you see uh, or hope to see the suitability language nailed down? I mean, by the time it leaves the assembly floor, or would it go to the Senate side? Well, without a doubt, before it leaves the assembly floor, because as I was just uh, sharing with uh, Mr. Cooper, we've made a commitment uh, that we're going to uh, insert uh, suitability language into this placeholder uh, language, again, on page 25, lines 15 through 18. Um, but, you know, if, if we come to an agreement tomorrow, we may insert it, you know, next week. But uh, we're having every other week meetings. Uh, we're exchanging revisions uh, of drafts of language and just trying to get to something that, uh, that ensures that, you know, because, again, I want to remind the entire committee, the primary issue here is having the strongest consumer protections, which includes suitability, right? Mm -hmm. It is certainly, uh, uh, whether we're talking brick and mortar or whether we're talking the Internet, we only want the highest quality operators uh, licensed in the state of California. Mm -hmm. And so to the degree uh, that our suitability standards that we use for our brick and mortar institutions uh, are not strong enough. Uh, we're looking at that. Uh, we've met with the Attorney General's office. We're uh, meeting with the stakeholders, and we're going to ensure that, uh, again, this is the highest standard in the country uh, and the best uh, both suitability and consumer protections available. Thank you. Rudy, you're next. Mr. Salas. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Um, first, let me just say uh, thank you. I know we had hours of discussion on this topic uh, going back a while back. So also with you, Mr. Jones-Sawyer. Um, I know the questions were already asked about suitability, and, you know, as we move forward and we start talking about this, I, can you just talk about what you see in the near future in terms of how we're going to address some of these issues just to bring comfort to a lot of folks probably in the audience and maybe members on the dais. Um, I know you've been working diligently towards this, and you know I'm glad we've been able to talk about a lot of policy issues dealing not only with this topic but other topics as well. So if you could just kind of elaborate a little bit on that and kind of where we're moving forward and how that process is going to come out, um, I'd appreciate it. 
Sure. Well, um, you know, the, the, the basis, uh, well, there's a number of arguments out there, but one of the arguments being uh, there were uh, operators uh, who at a time when uh, Internet poker was questionably uh, legal, legal or illegal uh, in a gray or black market, however you want to look at it, uh, who were operated and some who continued to operate uh, in those black markets. Um, there has been uh, federal action on that. There's been uh, settlements, as you know, uh, on those issues. Uh, some of those companies have been bought and sold or uh, are no longer uh, in business. And as we saw today uh, in our presentation right here, uh, with the help of Google, uh, there's plenty of folks still operating uh, that folks are playing on today. Um, but the question becomes, you know, do we want to allow uh, companies that acted uh, uh, illegally or participated in black markets uh, to engage in the California legal market going forward? And, uh, and what does that mean? Um, what assets can they bring uh, from that time? Did they gain uh, mm -hmm. customer advantages? Is it a level playing field uh, for all California companies in a legal market to be able to compete uh, equally? Uh, and that's the, the, the spirit and the nature of the discussions is how do we draft uh, language and how do we ensure that the uh, license uh, process uh, allows for a uh, level playing field and, of course, uh, doesn't allow uh, bad actors uh, into the market, which of course is the same uh, uh, standard we hold for card clubs uh, and any other gaming uh, uh, entity in the state of California, brick and mortar. Right? We have a process by which to make sure uh, people of less than ethical and moral standards are Correct. not uh, in that business. And so yeah, and, that, and I just wanted you, uh, that to be heard for everybody on the record because I know I've spoken to both of you. Um, individually about this and you know having a fair playing field for everyone um, I think was of paramount importance and I know that's sure. those will be amendments that we continue to work on because this is uh, so a work in progress but you know I do commend both of you guys for for sticking to it and everybody uh, that testified it today because it shows uh, many many hours of trying to reach something and like you said uh, Mr. Gray you know that black market and the gray market not reference to your last name but um, you know, it does operate, right? And, and what are we doing for consumers and what are we doing for California residents to make sure that they have a recourse available uh, in case something were to go wrong? And we heard testimony earlier about people that lost, you know, um, funds because a site went down or, you know, what is that recourse and what do we have in the state of California? I did have a second question, but I can't remember if you addressed it or not, and it was dealing with the tax and fee structure. I know Mr. Daly had asked earlier uh, before all the testimony w was given, and so um, I know we're going to move forward with that. I know you're going to take some possible amendments uh, and appropriations as we deal with that. So let me just say thank you to both the authors, and I look forward to continuing the discussions and working with each of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Gibson, and then it will be Mr. Levine. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I've heard and I know that um, Mr. Gray and others have been working extremely hard from the time that I was assigned by the Speaker Atkins to the GL Committee. This has been certainly something that has been apparent, and certainly I know that you as the Chair has been working um, diligently um, by putting people together. Um, I don't have a question for you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through the chair, is it possible I can call upon, if, with your permission, if I can have the Bureau of Gambling Control, are they present, and if I can ask them a question? Is someone from that office here that could come to the front so that we can uh, answer the member's question? <clears throat> So if you could both give your names uh, for the record. And if you need the question repeated, please uh, let me know. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, Robert Sumner, uh, Office of Legislative Affairs for the Attorney General. And uh, I'll turn to my BGC representative. Yolanda Morrow, Assistant Chief of our Licensing with the Bureau of Gambling Control. Could you please repeat the question for <laughs> Mr. Gibson? Sure, thank you very much. Um, my question is, would you consider this process thorough? Um, is it strong enough or weak? compared to other states. And the processes you're, you're referring to is what is currently envisioned in that the is current for Internet Poker. 
you know, I, I will turn it over for a technical perspective for BGC, but I will definitely say that uh, obviously the Attorney General regulates a number of enterprises that have kind of analogous regulatory structures, and we appreciate that especially uh, Chair Gray has been very engaged with our office in terms of making sure that California continues to have uh, in every industry that we regulate at least as high, if not a higher standard. Um, and then, Delano, if you have any uh, particular technical perspectives on that. Um, I agree. Uh, this, the standard is, is pretty high. Um, it's hard to compare state to state because every state has different size. Um, right now, we only deal with brick and mortar, so there's different size card rooms and different size casinos, so it's hard to compare um, the licensing structures and the process state by state, but I think our standards are pretty high. Well, Michigan, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think there are many states that compare to the size of the number of brick and mortar institutions we have uh, in the state of California. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Great. Did that answer your question, Mr. Yeah. Gibson? Well, yeah, because they said what I thought they were going to say, and that is that, um, that one, the Attorney General and the Chairman is engaged in the conversation, and it seems like it to be very, very close, and then also the highest standard that the Attorney General is demanding and while working with the chairman is going to be there and that means Californians are going to be protected. That would be correct and the attorney general is certainly committed to working with the author to make sure that that's funded from day one. Yeah, thank you very much. I think it's very important that we hear that. Thank you. Okay, hold on one second. I know Mr. Levine you were next but Mr. Cooper has a follow-up question to that. Yeah, yeah, since, that you guys, since you guys are up here so right now I know the AG is, is doing whatever they're doing but just for the card rooms alone you guys have 2,500 cases pending right now. I believe, right? Investigations? Uh, so, I, yes. So that doesn't give me a lot of faith, and not because of you guys, but just the administration and what they're doing right now. So here you take on something else that's immensely larger, you know, and that's much more complicated. I mean, that raises significant concerns in, in my area. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I can comment on that, and I, and I do appreciate the comment. Uh, I think that the first thing to note is that when we look at the different uh, regulated entities uh, or enterprises that the Bureau of Gambling Control engages in, uh, assuming that there is a framework established for legal internet poker, this would be an entirely new operation within the Bureau. Uh, so this would not be uh, coupled with uh, the resources that are currently going toward card room uh, licensing and regulation. Uh, the other thing that I'll say from that is just the fact that uh, you know, we have had the opportunity to learn that when we have such a high standard, as we've referenced, such a high standard of um, uh, regulation to ensure that the right operators are being licensed and permitted to engage in these activities, uh, there is a very resource-heavy demand that's involved in that, and that's something that we're actively uh, continuing to analyze from a resource perspective for card rooms. And that's one of the reasons why we've been committed to being engaged early in on this legislation to make sure that uh, in the event that we do start from zero in the uh, regulated uh, applicant uh, process for internet poker, that from the very onset of that process, we have sufficient resources to make sure that we're providing that level of service. And I think you need expertise, too, because right now you don't possess that because most of your folks are coming back from other parts of DOJ and not staying long enough from B&E or B of I. So there's always been an issue regarding folks with the technical capacity to really thoroughly investigate these issues. And then I know somebody talked about comparing it to other jurisdictions, but Nevada has a much more robust gaming industry with less staff, if I'm correct. And obviously we have a much, we have a lot more issues here in California than Nevada does. So, I mean, how do you, how do you qualify that or quantify that to the members earlier statement regarding other jurisdictions? Right, and I think that uh, it was a fair point earlier. It's not always easy to compare with other states. Uh, California is certainly unlike any other state, both in terms of its size and then also just our own history of uh, how we've chosen to regulate uh, various gambling enterprises within the state. Um, and I think that you, you obviously, uh, uh, Member Cooper, you obviously have a, a very good understanding of the challenges that we've been facing in terms of making sure that we have adequate staff expertise to deal with these types of uh, uh, permitting processes. Um, Yolanda, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but really for me it would just be the fact that, you know, obviously this legislation will present an entirely new uh, type of uh, licensing structure for this industry and that we're going to be looking both to other states but then also to the experiences that we've had with regulating card rooms and other entities but, like that. But you guys have significant experience now and you still have a backlog, so just because you're starting a new program with a clean slate, it doesn't mean that I can say that I do have concerns about it being kind of bogged down. And you continue to have a problem with hiring 
and retention of qualified experts. You, you can't do it right now, so how do you propose, and this is the devil's in the diesel, this is very important, how do you propose to bring in the expertise now for an entirely new program that's much more substantial in size? I think that that's something we'd have to work with consultants on and go out into the industry and actually get some training for our staff. Um, we've recently cr created a training program um, that BGC is putting on for not only our staff but for industry staff on enforcement and licensing and all those um, areas so that that's something that we can continually provide and since it's our training and it's our staff that are pr putting it on, um, anytime we have new staff coming on it's something that we can do. All right. it's, it's not against you guys, it's the administration I know you're dealt with. You've asked for uh, additional staff increases over the years. It has not been granted. So, you know, Mr. Cooper, this might be a good time um, in light of the fact that uh, you've raised this issue before. Uh, the committee, uh, as you may all recall, authored a letter uh, to the budget chair uh, supporting uh, the dispositions, and I believe uh, you all have embraced that letter. Uh, is that correct in your request that's coming forward this year? Uh, yeah, we are actively working on our response to that letter, but I mean, I would certainly say that we deeply appreciate the fact that this uh, committee has been uh, committed to making sure that we're supported in our budget asks to but, dealing with that issue. And currently you do have the funding for additional positions. You guys, the money's in the budget right now, so you could have additional positions right now. You've just been stymied over the years. Yes. That's correct. Yes. So I've only been here a year and a half, so it's pretty easy to see. They've been stymied the whole time. What makes us think things are going to change now? You know, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I might take a shot at that, at that uh, Mr. Cooper. The, uh, I, I think you raised an important issue. Um, if, in fact, we are the largest or one of the largest gaming states uh, in the country, uh, not only should we have uh, our act together on the regulatory side, but we should have the most cutting edge, the highest standard uh, 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 regulation uh, of all of these industries. But uh, in its very nature, uh, expediency and efficiency and the highest standards don't necessarily always uh, not butt heads. And I think we've got to be careful to strike the right balance uh, that we're uh, doing a good job and a thorough job of regulating folks and also making an attempt to uh, reduce any backlogs or having that inefficiency without compromising those very standards. Correct. We're doing none of that now because they're forced to work with one hand tied behind their backs because of administrators who sit on their butts all day. And I'm, not, I'm not seeing anybody here, but yeah. other folks. Frustration heard and duly noted. Thank you. Mr. Levine, you have a question. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Vice Chair and, uh, and Mr. Chair and, and joint author, Mr. Joint Sawyer. Thanks so much for all your work on this. I'm voting aye today. Just want to put that out there. You're both members of the committee, so I'm not the only I vote uh, in the room, um, which is good. Um, I think when we're looking at this issue, we're wondering, you know, is this necessary and is this good for California? And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people could be quite indifferent to it. But I think from the testimony from uh, the folks today, we heard that uh, people said, you know, it already is here. And we don't have the protections that people need. And that's going to be what I'll be looking for. I mean, everyone's looking for a little bit more from this bill as it moves forward. So, you know, I just want to respect the work that you're doing and know that there's more work to be done. But to help you guys get to doing that work to protect California consumers, I'm going to vote aye. What uh, I am concerned about problem gaming, um, it, it is a real issue uh, for folks. When you're at a table and you put those chips out there, well, first you put your cash out there and then you get your chips and then you get your chips there and then you see them taken away, that's, that's quite visceral. Um, I don't know, because I haven't played eye poker, and maybe I should start, but I'm not there yet. Um, I don't know what that experience is like. Let's make it legal first. Yeah, good, good, good point. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, it's a different experience. You just see, you know, are you just seeing points go up and down versus your chips get, getting taken away from you? And how a, a better response to that. And when I talk with my friends who like to play, that's something that comes up in those conversations. Um, I think the other one is, of course, when you're at a table and someone in a good establishment says, maybe you want to get up from the table right now, because that happens. Can that occur in iPoker? And I think that technology is there that will enable people to, say, you know, adapt to the play, 
how quickly people are losing money and what, how often they're, they're having that experience. And can the technology suggest maybe you want to take a break? So these are conversations we, we need to start having with the technology providers and, of course, um, those who will have the, the licenses to provide this as well. What kind of parameters will they be putting on their games so that we can protect consumers um, who may not be aware that they've got a problem? Um, I think that there's also, of course, you know, this is a game of chance. There are odds that somewhere we need to be able to um, perhaps audit the source code of the software so that we can make sure that there is not uh, a stacked game, a rigged game uh, for California consumers. So these are some issues that I haven't heard um, talked about too much, uh, but these are the ones that are going to be weighing on me as this bill moves forward. But I'm really glad to support you now because this is very hard work. There, I just raised a few questions, and there are a multitude of questions uh, that you're going to be dealing with and the stakeholders are going to be dealing with. So thank you both. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I think you raise uh, a lot of important questions, uh, unresolved issues, and um, a lot of things that you know we need to get to the doing part. And uh, in a decade of debating this bill, it wasn't until I became chair of this committee that we even had a vote on doing something, on getting to the doing and fixing. And meanwhile, as we saw today, uh, people are playing, being taken advantage of in unregulated markets uh, that definitely don't have any of those technologies uh, that you referenced that I think you're right do exist uh, and should be uh, mandated as part of this process uh, in regulating this type of activity. Thank you. Mr. Steinnorth, you're next. Uh, Mr. Gray, I'd like to echo some of the statements that have already been made today. I, I appreciate the time that you've put into this process, the, the negotiations, the stakeholder meetings. You've been working at this very diligently for a long time. And, and hearing the testimony today, I understand you're committed to continuing the negotiations between, between the tribes, really to try and make sure that we bring both sides on the same side so that we don't have opposition to this bill. I'm, I'm prepared to support you on this bill today, but I do want to withhold my position for the floor just to make sure that we do continue those negotiations all the way through. Thank you for that, and you certainly uh, have my commitment, both verbally and in writing in the bill, uh, that we're going to address those unresolved issues. And I believe our last question, unless someone else raises their hand. Mr. Gibson, you have a I just want to move the bill. Well, golly gee whiz. We have a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Salas uh, seconded it. Um, Ms. Walburn, you had a comment. Uh, no, I just, yes, just a, a quick comment. Um, I feel it's important that we do have legislation about eye poker in the state for a lot of the things that were discussed, including consumer protection, so citizens can play safely and feel safe online as well as standing up to the legal challenges that, you know, are sure to come. Um, but I do have, you know, concerns it, within my district. I have tribal governments that have concerns. It, within the region are folks on both sides of the issue. So I, my hope that the licensing fee issues, the suitability, the clear policy can be put together. And we have spoken, and I, I share your the chairman's concerns also uh, about making sure that we can get something uh, done and uh, available to everyone that will be, everyone will be in agreement with. So that is my hope as well. Um, I will be reserving my vote at this time and uh, see the process go forward. Does anyone else have a question before we call the roll? Would you like to offer a close? Certainly, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, a lot's been said today uh, on this issue, and again, an issue that's been debated in this body for uh, almost a decade. Uh, we've heard from local government, we've uh, heard from uh, horse racing folks, we've heard from card club folks, we've heard from tribal governments uh, all in support. We've heard uh, some remaining concerns around the suitability issue, and we started this process uh, last year uh, with two major points of contention around horse racing. Uh, and around the suitability language. Uh, we've addressed one of those concerns in a way that's brought together a coalition of supporters that we've never seen uh, over the course of that decade. Uh, we have more work to do. 
We've made commitments uh, to work with folks to uh, arrive at uh, top-notch uh, suitability language that uh, makes sure that this bill not just protects consumers but uh, ensures the highest standards of who's licensed uh, here in California. And it was said that this is, you know, a thorny and difficult issue. This is a thorny and difficult issue, and as I look up uh, at all of you, I see a whole host of members who are elected uh, with me, uh, given the confidence uh, of the voters of California uh, by allowing us to serve a little longer in this body, by working together and tackling big issues. And in fact, uh, this is one of those thorny, difficult, uh, big issues. We made great progress uh, in a bipartisan fashion on this committee. Uh, we are going to move a bill forward today, and I am as hopeful uh, as I've ever been, and I think you heard uh, that sentiment expressed by a lot of folks today, uh, that we can get something done uh, this year that's good for California, uh, that protects consumers, and again, that ensures uh, the highest uh, standards. And with that, I would respectfully ask for your aye vote today. Thank you very much. I accept that pledge that you've given and your com word to, to commit to taking on all of those issues that are still outstanding, and I compliment you uh, for doing that openly here today. So, Thank you. would you mind calling the roll? Gray. Man. Aye. Gray, aye. Bigelow. Aye. Bigelow, aye. Alejo. Alejo, aye. Bonta. Campos. Campos, aye. Cooley. Aye. Cooley, aye. Cooper. Aye. Cooper, aye. Daly. Gallagher. Aye. Gallagher, aye. Christina Garcia. Aye. Christina Garcia, aye. Eduardo Garcia. Aye. Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gibson. Aye. Gibson, aye. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Joan Sawyer. Aye. Joan Sawyer, aye. Levine. Aye. Levine, aye. Linder. Aye. Linder, aye. Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Solace. Aye. Solace, aye. Steinorth. Aye. Steinorth, aye. Waldron. Wilk. Aye. Wilk, aye. Yes, Mr. Chairman, your bill is out with 18 votes. Congratulations. I would like to thank all of our members. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. I'd like to thank all of our members for their attentiveness to detail and their courtesy. The roll will stay open for a few moments for members that wish to uh, add on.